Hopefully at the end of probably the worst winter I can ever remember, the signs of things are starting to improve now. But what I'm going to cover in the next few videos is how much the weather conditions and the ground conditions affect the outcome of your shot. First of all, we're going to look at the speed of the greens, which will generally be in tandem with how soft or firm the greens are. And we're going to show you a couple of different kind of shots to show you the difference in how the ball would react to it. Thanks to the uh, magic of the Golf Tech Studio and the FSX 2020 software, we can pre-program in all the different conditions that come from playing all over the world. Playing in England, at this time of year, the conditions will change faster than anywhere else you could possibly play. So it's really important that you're on your toes and you understand the differences that are going to come because of the conditions underfoot and in the sky. So 20 yard pitch shot, soft greens, which would generally mean that they are going to be slow. Let's see what kind of reaction we get on this ball. Just a lob wedge. Very little bounce. It hits and it skids on. It's about an eighth stim. If I send the ball in a little bit lower, this one's pitched at 23 yards and gone to 26 yards, so only three yards of roll. If we send it in a little bit lower, it's rolling, but it's not rolling very far. Now let's see what happens if we make the greens faster and we make them firmer. The last shot carried 16 yards, ran out to 22, launching at 28 and a half degrees and spinning at 2,900 revs. Let's play the same shot but on a green that is stimping at around about 13 and also much firmer. First thing you see is it's almost like a tennis ball landing on a tennis court. First bounce, second bounce, and then it's gone. All the spins come off the ball just because of the speed of the green. That's spun at about 3,000, so only 100 revs more. It's launched at a degree less but it's carried 12 yards and it's run to 27. You've got to be really adaptable. But the biggest change you'll see, and probably the hardest one to figure, is on full shots. So I've come onto a par three of about 160 yards and I've got an eight iron. We've turned it back to current conditions of wet greens and also slow greens. And let's see with an eight iron what kind of result we get. It's on a good line. It's gonna pitch just short of the flag and there's almost no bounce, a familiar sight. Pitching at around about uh, 154, only running to 155. So the club I use is the club I'm gonna carry. Right, let's change the conditions again. Same shot, but fast and firm greens. Let's see what happens. Similar strike, pitching around about the same length. Again, huge first bounce going off the back of the green. At this point, I've got to start calculating what club I'm going to use. That one's still moving, as you can see, on a very small slope on the green. Carried at 158, spinning around about the same amount, but finished at 173. So on the basis of those results, I've got two little tips for you. The first one, on the chipping green before you play, hopefully the chipping green is of a similar surface to what you're going to play on the golf course, you're going to find your 50-50 shot. What shot would land at 10 yards and run to 20, land at 5, and run to 10. It's the idea of knowing what club to use to produce a result that is very predictable. And then the second tip is on your first shot into the first green, hopefully you hit a good one, maybe it's your approach shot coming in there, work out where your pitch mark is and then measure out how far it's taken the ball to stop because then you'll start to get a good idea of how much you've got to allow in terms of bounce and spin for the condition of the greens.